YouTubers always show you perfect day Z runs. Well, this one actually sucked and I actually overcome those odds and I thought it'd be really important for me to show you what it looks like when it doesn't go perfect. Welcome my friends. This is round two of how to have a perfect start in day Z. Okay. We already did one of these videos, but my thought is we can spawn in different locations and have different experiences uh, based on the locations we spawn on and we can come across all different sort of adversaries on that journey as well. So hopefully the second one will have new information, maybe some old information too, uh, but ultimately helpful information nevertheless. If you have not seen the first video, I highly recommend watching that before this one linked here. First thing we want to do, find the coast. I see the coast. Now, if I didn't spawn next to these buildings right here, right? I would put the coast on my left or on my right and I would run forever. I'm going to run straight to these buildings. Okay. Now, the first thing we are looking for is a road that leads away from the ocean. Okay. <clears throat> I just spawned in. My food and my water are like a ticking time bomb, right? They're slowly depleting in a way that is going to kill me. I could spend all of my time looting through this area. But more so what I want to do is I want to get out of this area and further inland, okay? So I'm going to run this direction. I'm going to pretend I don't know where I'm going. I'm just running through the houses, okay? If I wanted to, I could loot all of these houses. Look at this. I see a scope store right there, that, that marketplace right in front of me. I know that's like a good building. You can find good stuff in there, right? So I'm going to check it. But ultimately, we don't want to waste too much time here. I see a lot of players like spend their... Spend the first five minutes, but look at and even in this really good building. I found zero. Okay. What I want to do instead is I want to go through these sheds and I want to try and find a blunt object or more importantly, something that can cut, right? That's what I'm looking for. That's number one priority, but sometimes it's not going to go exactly how you want. I was, Oh, we got a zombie apocalypse on our hands. One second. When you're fighting zombies, always remember that you want to be blocking when they're attacking, right? So it doesn't matter if you wait until they attack and we just hang out. Maybe we just hang out for a little bit. Okay, maybe we just hang out and then you do it. But you always want to be blocking when they attack, right? It's very important that you don't take any damage from any Zed. Okay, so I found a dead survivor here. They died to that zombie right there. They probably didn't watch this tutorial. We'll go over how to fight zombies a little bit more in a, in a second, but... Take everything. It belongs to us now, okay? Look at this. I found a road relative to the ocean that leads inland, okay? Oh, looks like I found a player over here. Okay, so a zombie comes. We want to stagger them with the power hit, okay? When we stagger them with the power hit, it kind of knocks them back. Let me go talk to this person over here. Think of zombies as an opportunity for loot, right? Every time that they spawn... When we kill them, we have an opportunity for loot as much as a house or anything like that. Let's see what this person's all about. I know that we're both fresh spawns, so we don't really have much to lose. So it's okay to approach them with, like, caution to the wind, if you will. Hello? Hello? Hey, how you doing? Hi. Did you, uh, die to a zombie over there? Do you know how to talk to me? Uh, caps lock. Hello. Oh, thanks, brother. Hey, how you doing? Oh, there's another guy right there. Good. Yo. Yo. How we doing? Hey, you guys want to come with me on a journey? We're heading inland. We're gonna go uh, get some food and stuff. How are we feeling about that? I have that? a buddy getting on the server right now. He's loading into the server as we speak. Okay, I get that. I get that. We can all go. Bring your buddy with me. Yeah. What's your name over there? Come on over. Don't be fucking weird. Don't make it weird, dude. Come be friends. Yeah, we're just trying, we're trying to be friends trying out here, to be trying weird. to learn how to play this game. Yeah, I know. We're all, we're all, we all got a little bit of tism in us. You know what I mean? How we doing? What's your guys' <laughs> names? Um, I'm, I'm Jared. Nice to meet you, Jared. Your turn now. Go on. <laughs> Go on, anytime now. I believe in you. You got this. I'm with you. Yes, yes. What's your name? You don't have I'm a name? I'm going to look for my buddy real quick. Give me a second. I'll be back. Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. My name is Mahogany. It's nice to meet you. 
Do you, are you new to the game, my friend? <coughs> Dude, your mic is not working at all. I haven't. I'm hearing you talk for like negative two seconds every time. Hold the caps lock button like five times longer. Hold it longer. Like way longer. Maybe you have voice activity on. That could also be the problem. I don't know. I don't know what your name is, mystery person. Are you new? Shake rapidly if you're new. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Did you find your buddy? No. Do we have do we have like maps of this game or do we have to find one? Yeah, I can help you guys. I was actually Yeah, I can help you guys. Uh so yeah, like you're trying to find your buddy. That sucks, bro, because like it's gonna spawn you somewhere and like we don't know where really. But uh, something you can do is yeah. go to the I Survive. It's like a map online, and it'll like help oh, gotcha. with okay. that. You know what I mean? Um, but we gotta find out what town we're in. How do we do that, guys? Well, let's find out together. Come over here. This is saying that way is Cami Wobo, and that way is Hexa the the Ho. But if we go over here, see that little white sign way out there, way deep out there? That'll have the the town name on it. Same right there. Oh, look at this right there. Little town name. Well, this is pretty perfect, guys. <laughs> and, like, if you're trying to find a buddy, right, you need to find the town name. Uh, but he needs to run with, like, the coast on his left or his right, and we'll definitely run into him. Okay, this journey has been shifted, guys. My buddy said he's on train tracks. Yeah, train tracks go around the entire map, so you could literally be anywhere. But running on the train tracks ah, is a shit. good idea. That is a good idea. But he needs to make sure he's running the right way. So he needs to find a street sign like this. We are in Korhenabek. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, cool. Um... Do you guys, you guys want to learn how to fight together? Hold right click. So, I know, I know we have uh, light attacks and heavy attacks and like a lunge heavy attacks. But that's. Do you all know I what know. to do if zombies attack you? No. Never stop walking backwards. That's always walking, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. If you hold control while you walk backwards, you'll walk slower, and you regain stamina faster, and it allows your homie to fuck the zombies up better, right? Uh, okay, cool. Um, so, where is your buddy? Loki, like a lifesaver. I have no idea. He's dying to a zombie right now. That's okay, all I, I get that. I get that. I get that. Well, here's the deal. Our food and our water are depleting like every second we spend here, so we need to we need oh, to yeah. we need to loot. And secondly, your buddy needs to find the main road and he needs to find this kind of sign. And then he needs to tell you what it says in Russian, obviously, or whatever, acrylic. And then I will help you out. There's a guy back there right behind us with a bunch of shit. What up, player? Yo! Come on over. There, wait, there's two more. Or there's another. Those, Yo. Those are zombies, a my friend. People. Yeah, we're figuring it out. Careful, there's zombie apocalypse. Oh, that's all you, bro. That's all you, bro. <laughs> Damn, she's got a swollen eye. Nice, nice, nice. Teamwork. What's your name, dude? There's a lot of people here. This is exactly four of us. Yeah, we all learned in the game. We all learned in the game. You, you're new to the game? Oh, yeah. Uh, them two are, yeah. I'll teach you how to play. Oh, you're teaching them how to play. Okay. You can come with us, dude. What's your name? Uh, Poe. Nice to meet you, Poe. Yeah, this guy's trying to figure out his mic, but he doesn't know that he needs to hold the caps lock button a little bit longer. So he's like letting go of it really early, and then it's like not Where making any know? noise at all. Yeah, work there. Yeah, I heard you. <laughs> We're waiting for this guy's buddy. This guy's looking for a friend, but his friend doesn't I'm, know where I'm, he's at. I'm trying to talk to him. Hey, right now. Uh, don't don't wear don't wear that. We oh, won't be able to tell hear him you. why. Yeah, we. It muffles your mic when you're wearing uh that. It's only it only does that with motorbike or motorbike helmets. I'd be motorbiking. Do you guys know where we are? Yeah, um, Korenobin. We're south of the Solnitchny factory. Right. This guy's starving to death. 
<laughs> you guys want to find a car? I got a radiator and a spark plug on me. Yeah, we just need the the other thing then, huh? I only grab I only grab those two because they're lighter than the battery itself is. Wait, your homie's in electro? Who just said that? Yeah, oh, I didn't say that. I'm gonna go. You're going to electro? You'll die before you get there. You'll starve to death. Electro is down that road to the right. I don't, I don't know where we are, but I know. I know that we're we're, we're in, close to us. We're in Solnichny. Or in acrylic, Korhenabin. Something like that. <laughs> What's your name, new guy? You said Poe? We have I don't think it's your name. Yeah. This is Jared. Yo. Okay, we are you looking for a buddy? And your friends in Electro? My buddy's at. I just gotta go start looting. Yeah, we have to go inland, guys. If we stay here, we're gonna starve to death. We have to we go inland runner. really quick. Hey, what's your problem? You just aimed at that guy. Pulled your gun. I didn't shoot him. I could have shot him. It was a joke, bro. I don't think you threaten someone's life Get as a him. joke, bro. I don't think that's how it works. I don't think I want to fight you guys. I don't think I want to fight you either. Please move. For the love of I thought we were friends. Was I actually going to oh, shoot him? That pulled a gun on me. That's why we're not friends. We're not friends anymore. You pulled a gun on him. Zombies on him. He's gonna run out of guns. Ooh, I'm gonna get him. Why'd you do it, Poe? That's not the nicest thing to do. Why'd you do it, Poe? 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 Yo, are you okay? Yo, new player, are you okay? Are you okay? Tell me you're okay, brother. Tell me you're okay. Tell me you're okay. No, Jared. 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 No, Jared, please tell me you're okay, bro. Oh, Jared, there was a greater mission. Oh, no, Jared. Okay, so I got a bunch of zombies here. There's a bunch on me because I just shouted a bunch. I need to lock a couple in just like that. Boom. I could fight one zombie. I could fight two zombies, but I don't even want to. I want to lock these guys in, too. I'm going over here, Jared. 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 I'm screaming, so that's what's attracting them, guys. The different volume that you talk on. I'm sorry, I'm trying to teach, but also I just want to find Jared. Jared. Jared, no. Come on out, zombies. Where are they? Come on, man. <laughs> okay, it's the adventures change. I gotta. It's a rescue mission, Jared, dude. Ah, uh, he's got a lot of goodies. I'm not gonna lie. 
Oh my goodness, this guy's been playing and playing and playing. He's a kiddo. Uh, golden rule, guys. <laughs> Don't aim at someone. <laughs> all right, well, the, the, the tutorial is a little different now. Um, I'm just going to take all the important stuff from him, which is just about everything here. I'm going to take the compass. Always want to take the compass, especially as a new player. Sorry, Poe. I think it's important that we talk about what just happened there. So I came across a bunch of strangers, and we all had conflicting goals on the coast. It's up to you how much time you spend on the coast ultimately. But I waited a long time, and now you're going to see my HP is low. I'm low on food, and I've, I've taken a bullet. So moving inland, I'm compromised, and that makes the journey really difficult. So if you do spend time on the coast, obviously don't waste too much time. I, I wanted to spend a little longer because I wanted to go inland with the, the buddies, but turns out it didn't work out how I wanted, and that pretty much sums up Daisy. If you run into these walls and then hold crouch, you'll pop down. So you can do this really fast, but sometimes the floor is like elevated like that and you can't get under, right? You can't lay prone. But right here, I should be able to. So I just laid prone, pop me through. Yo, Jared. Zombies have a really tough time with corners, so you can play corners like this where they have to turn. And you can use it as like a, a buffer. Kind of like how I use blocking, right? But we gotta get off the inland now, guys. I tried to make friends with people, it didn't work out. Jared! Ah, oh, bro, I don't want to leave him behind. Did you notice how both of those players, both of those players, they wanted to go on the coast to the next town? Neither of those players that were new wanted to go inland. I can't express how like important just that small detail just changes the entirety of how the game works for you. So it looks like I'm hurting pretty bad now. Took a bullet back there. I gotta find some food, so we gotta travel inland. Sometimes when you're playing, this is exactly what I wanted, guys. I wanted it to be different. I wanted to you to see how I would deal with a different situation, okay? So I want these pants because they're in better condition. Got a lot of ammo off Poe when we killed him. Oh my goodness, that's a huge find. So if I were to drink this water right here, because I just found this item in the world. If I were to drink the remaining water in that, I would die of, of a sickness, okay? I have a water purification tablet, so I could drag that over, a chlorine tablet, and I could purify this water for drinking immediately, okay? Boom. Now I could drink this water. We got to go inland, guys. I'm hurting pretty bad. I don't have any food, but I am leaving this town with my back to the ocean, and I'm headed inland. With yellow HP, I got pretty badly hurt back there. We ain't even gonna lie. But I have coding, so coding works like this. I pop this pill, it's gonna put my HP up a tier, like I'm not as in, in as much pain as before, so I can run one tier faster. Now, what am I in need of right now? I'm in need of food, right? It looks like there are some industrial buildings up here, but I already have a knife and I have a gun. I have all this stuff that I, that I that's going to help me in the adventure, but I don't have food. So I'm going to skip all of these industrials. I'm going to put my priority on finding civilian houses and on fighting zombies that are not l located in this industrial center. Okay. Because if I fight a zombie relative to this industrial center, like that guy in the red jacket that I just saw, that guy right there, right? If I fight him. He's not going to have food on him because he is an industrial zombie, right? Unless maybe that's a civilian zombie. That actually looks like a civilian zombie. I think these are civilian zombies in an industrial area, so I could fight them. But all in all, we're going to try and get past that and assure that the zombies we're fighting are going to be regulated in, uh, in a civilian district. Hopefully giving us more food, right? But see, this is the road that I was that I was on in the beginning with my back to the ocean. 
Okay. And I'm... Notice how I'm not running on the road. But I'm like parallel to the road. Running with it. The reason that's important. People are... If someone's on the hillside or running on the road, they're looking down the road at all times. Even I am looking at the road at all times, right? So it's important to disconnect yourself from the thing that you're using to navigate your path. And... Oof. And also, whenever you're doing this, find out which direction is inland. So west is inland for me, right? So we have a civilian house here. I'm going to run through it really quick. See if I can find some food. Doesn't look like it. Maybe downstairs. Let's see. Nope. Gotta keep going. But we're in a bad way, right? This one, how to have a perfect start. Sometimes, even even though you may do everything right, you may come across a circumstance that that isn't perfect. And you gotta deal with that, right? Let's say I wanted to hydrate a little bit more. I have a stream here. I could fill this up. And because I have those chlorine tabs. I can purify it and just chug that so I don't have to worry about water as much. And I could just focus on finding food. Also, what this does is it makes our body stronger versus sickness. If I have uh, yellow food or water, it's like your immune system is just strong strengthened based on you being like fully fed or fully hydrated. So I always recommend making sure that if you can get water, get water. I actually think of food as less important than water because wells are few and far between, but food can be found in all sorts of forms in all sorts of locations. I hear wildlife up here, but unfortunately I don't have a gun yet to use on them. Okay, so I have to head inland. All right, we're going inland. The road is right here next to me. I'm running inland. And it looks like I see something up there. Boom, we found some houses. Now, as I said in the previous video, these houses already, just from distancing myself this much from the coast, imagine those two fresh spawns that we just came across. They're running left and right down the coast right now, right? After all that, all that chaos broke out, they just took off probably down the coastline. What does that do? That puts them in more areas where people are running and less loot is going to be, right? But I am inland, so I'm in a spot where I should be finding more loot. I should be finding more food. Okay, unless someone's on my path, there should be goodies right in front of me. Okay, so already ammo. That's good. I need food, though. Let's find it. Come on now. Or if I find a gun, obviously I can go hunt that, that deer. We can make it out that way. No food there. We got a couple houses, got a couple zombies here. So, <clears throat> in this circumstance, if you weren't abundantly confident with fighting Zeds, I would not recommend trying to fight a Zed for food, right? You're you're on the, the end of the lifeline. And if you just get hit a couple times, it could really it could really push you over the edge, you know? So I would say only if you feel super confident that you have figured out how to time the zombies' attacks should you really be out here fighting them in this circumstance. But see, as long as we're blocking and we're keeping in consideration when they're attacking, we could definitely ha heighten our opportunities of finding something to keep us alive, okay? Remember, blocking every time. Time it in between. Boom. We got me once. That's not good. I'm really happy this this run went this way. Because ultimately, like, a, that first one I did was almost perfect. Like, I loaded in. Didn't come across anyone. I was going to try and help those guys, obviously, like, teach them and teach you guys at the same time. But uh, the chaos the chaos is, I think, more representative of what a, a normal daisy run looks like, right? It's something that we can't really predict, and you can't put a can't put an expectation on it. You just gotta kind of run with it. Be like water, my child, right? Sort of situation. Okay, we got a little drip out here. Two tone that strippy. Okay, so we're gonna take that. 
pitchfork here, but still no food. Oh my goodness. I want to make it abundantly clear, guys. It do be like this, right? I'm a 6,000 hour player. I'm struggling to find food right now. Sometimes I honestly think someone else, probably an experienced player as well, ran the same ro road that I'm running. Oh, look at this, guys. We figured it out. We figured it out. I'm going to go hunt. Let's go. Straight to it. So I actually want to hunt with green rounds. Okay. The amount of bullets that hit the thing that you're hunting, the worse the yield of meat you're going to get, right? If I shoot buckshot, it's going to shoot a hundred little pellets at this creature. If I shoot the green round, it'll shoot one strong round, right? So I just got to make sure I hit in the head. Also, where you hit the prey changes how much yield. So if you hit in the head, you'll get the most with one bullet, right? Flashing red, wat red food, guys. It's tough out here. It's tough out here. I spent, honestly, I spent 10, 15 minutes sitting with those kids. <laughs> uh, but we're gonna we're gonna make it out. We're gonna make it out. Sometimes it it's this way. Coding. See, I want to make sure I'm moving good. Gotta take some drugs really quick. So I'll improve my ability to run. So thankfully I have the rain kind of helping a little bit with my feet cover, but I am obviously stomping my loud trekkers everywhere right now. Making lots of noise. Come on. So we want them to make some noise. We want to make sure we don't startle them. So we have to keep our eyes peeled. They're way this way. Pretty far. So we're going to be cutting it really close. If you have a lighter. Come on, Poe. You almost had a lighter. Okay, I see a house over there to the right as well. So after we hunt, we can keep our eyes there. We could try and get there to make a fire. In the last one, we hunted something, but I didn't show you guys how to cook it and prepare it. I'll, I've been getting a lot of comments like, how do you do that? I'm like, okay, well, I'll get to it. Okay, so I'm very close to animals now. Even though I'm on the edge of life, I'm in a position where I want to make sure that I don't mess this up, right? So I want to make sure I'm approaching really quietly. Not too loud. Looks like there's a house way down there too. Perfect. It could even be up the hill right now, right? So. We have to really come in here nice and smooth. Find out where he's at. There's a lot of brush cover, so it makes it quite difficult here. Could be in the valley there. Could be up as well, huh? It's up. Oh, it's way up there. He may be on the top there. So it's right around this range. The problem, so this is kind of unfortunate because I have to, I have to get close to them, um, but I have this big hill sort of stopping me, and I think they're right on the peak, so I have to approach pretty quietly here. Oh, there we go. Remember, I gotta hit him a headshot. I don't think he'll die if it's not a headshot. So I'm behind him directly, so he shouldn't hear me too well. We gotta hunt him, guys. We're hunting now. We got him. So I'm not gonna get as much meat from that, because I hit him twice, right? But it's gonna be enough to keep me alive, and that's what's important. 
if you heard me coming to the side, they're, they're, they're smart little creatures. I appreciate you, buddy. And from this, I will build an army. A lot of meat. I think I missed the first shot entirely. We're going to run back to those houses and we're going to make a fire, guys. Looks like we're cooking good now. I'm still going to title this video how to have a perfect start. Why? Because having a perfect start doesn't necessarily mean everything goes perfect for you. Right? You may have to have perfect in perspective of the situation you're facing. Right? <laughs> So I know there's a little fire in that house that we passed over here. I don't remember exactly where it was. I think it was over here. Yep, right here. Ooh, this is a big one. This is the one that we saw when we were coming down the hill. Okay, so things that we need for a fire. First off, I'm going to want to drop all my food in there. I'm going to want to do this pretty fast here. But I don't have matches, right? This is the most common situation, okay? I don't have matches. So right now, I need to make a hand drill kit, okay? So I'm going to drop all my food in here so I don't have to worry about it. It's in here and I get, and I have inventory space to do stuff. I'm going to go outside. I need to find a tree, okay? Oh. We need to find a tree, okay? And we need to get bark off this tree. Come on. Put it in your hands, dude. Uh-oh. My character's frozen. Come on. I'm bugged. I can't I can't get anything. So it looks like my character's handbug. So when this happens, just log off the server. You're going to come back in and I'm going to be like threading the needle of life. This is something that can happen in Daisy. Bugs do exist, right? I think a better name is when everything goes wrong. <laughs> so let's say this happened to you and you're in the screen and you're trying to process how you can, how you can um, get back in. Uh, don't join right away because it's going to take a second for your character to process logging out. Um, but just click play again. It'll join you back into the exact same server. Yeah, see, so it was registering my bat in my hands. Okay. So I don't know if you guys saw there, but when I got in, I had a bat in my hand. So always get two bark. It's important. Now we need to find a, a bush so we can get sticks. Looks like there's a bush right here. Got a short stick. Boom, boom, boom. We need at least two of them. Boom, I got two. That'll be enough to help me cook this so that I'm not going to die. <laughs> Alright. So how we make a hand drill kit. Keep in mind, none of your stuff can be wet for this, right? It's damp right now, but when I combine it, it won't be. I need the scroll wheel, combine the dark bark with the sword stick, hand drill kit, okay? Okay. Now I want to add kindling to the fire, okay? I'm going to put this dark bark, so I left click, place in the fire, okay? Now I'm going to put my stick in the fireplace, hand drill kit, and I'm going to ignite. And now we got a fire cooking. I'm going to put all these steaks on here, okay? And I'm going to go get more sticks because I don't want that fire to die. I don't want to have to make another hand drill kit. So I'm going to come up here. Get more sticks. We got a long stick. We're going to take that into our hands and go back inside. We're going to split the long stick. So when it's in our hands, we're going to hold left click. We're going to split the sticks. And we're going to put these sticks into the fireplace. And we could do that either by dragging on the inventory or just by left clicking. Boop. Attach. Okay. 
Now, this top area is smoking. It's going to cook the meat here as well, but this is going to not have hydration in it, okay? So you can smoke your fat, but you don't want to smoke your real meat, your venison meat, okay? So it's done cooking. I'm going to oops, switch those on, put these guys here. I'm going to eat it up. Okay, and as you can see, my HP began going up just from one steak. This is a great life. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy. This is what to do when everything goes wrong in Daisy. <laughs> what to do when everything... <laughs> oh man, that's, <laughs> that's a tough one. So I want it to be very clear, guys. Like, I'm a very experienced player, but sometimes it does happen the way that you just saw. You know what I mean? It can happen that way. But we made it out. Look at this. And the cool thing about DayZ is once you've kind of overcome that great adversity there, it's behind you now. I could literally sit in this building and heal to full HP on this one venison that I found. All it takes is that one break, right? Which will really put you in a place of comfort so you can continue your journey forward. Can you mind it? Your heat can, uh, you could get overheated if you get too close. So as you see, it goes to yellow. When it goes to yellow, just back away, okay? I believe it was this side. I always like to rotate left to right, left to right, so that none of them get smoked, but sometimes it's easy to forget what side you put it on. The steaks, when they are in your jacket or in your pants, it'll raise your temperature. So notice how I put them on the ground because I'm overheating right now. There's a modded map for PC called the Molsk um, that putting it in your jacket is like a good play because then it'll warm you when you're freezing cold, right? Because the Molsk takes place in the Arctic, but that's not for right now. So we're going to take those off. We're going to cook these guys. And it looks like, to me, we have overcome all that. No starvation. None of that. Dealt with it. We're here. We got a gun. We got a melee weapon. The next thing I'm going to look for, and this is something that you should always look for. By the way, I'm swagged out. I didn't even intend for this matching outfit in pristine condition, baby. Um, something you always want to look for on priority is you want to find armor, okay? So my ambition is to find armor next. And how we are going to do that is we are going to find a police station, okay? It's the most common place we're going to find armor. So I just took my jacket off so that I'm not burning up. As you can see, when I put it on, I get a little toasty. See, when I take it off, I'm nice and cool. See? It's because I have all these hot items, 80 degrees Celsius, 80 degrees Celsius. All right. Now, normally what I would recommend is for someone that's just starting off, once you get this food, relax, my friend. Okay, I should have I should have shown you that. I should probably, I'll, I'll slow-mo it. I'll slow-mo it. We'll do it again. I'll put it in the video. But if I drag something that's in better condition, so for example, this one's in worn and that one's damaged. If I drag it on top, it'll make them go to the one that is the majority. So I had more chlorine tablets that were in good shape. So when I dragged it over, it improved the condition, right? It's an important note for like ammo. If you have ammo and some of it's damaged and some of it's pristine, make sure you have more pristine ammo in the stack than damaged and then combine them and it will, it'll, it'll regulate that for you. Okay, there we go. So it looks like to me from that one thing, we now have enough food to last us I don't know that 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 jacket alone will probably last me like my character's health and food will probably last me two and a half hours from one venison like that okay and that just comes down to when I shot that creature I shot them with one bullet I would have gotten even more stakes I think had I hit a headshot with my one bullet right thank god I have terrible aim and missed that first shot though um so we're gonna go ahead and get outside now Notice how I'm dying to the heat. We don't want that. The main reason that I want to get outside as soon as possible is 
I don't want that smoke billowing to create any more attention than it already has and for me to be in that building any longer than I already have been, okay? Something that we talked about earlier, or something that uh, someone who watched the videos commented, sorry, earlier, is that their feet got in bad condition and when they were barefoot, they got bleeds on their feet, okay? Something you can always do if that if that comes to you and you don't have something for your feet, you could just put rags in your hand and in the bottom left you could scroll wheel down to feet wrapping and you can craft those, okay? Now, it's going to damage really quick, like super fast. They deteriorate rapidly, right? Um, but ultimately, it is coverage for your feet. Whatever the condition your rags are in, for example, my rags are worn here, that's the condition of the improvised foot wraps too, right? going to be the same condition okay also if your shoes are really damaged you could use a leather sewing kit to fix them okay a leather sewing kit will fix your shoes i think duct tape used to but i don't think it does anymore um also alongside that leather sewing kits fix your armor okay so leather sewing kits and epoxy putty are incredibly valuable all right it looks like we are good to start crawling but look at I'm in the woods now. I have no idea where I'm at, let's say. Okay. I have no idea where I'm at. What should I do? Well, I should think of the direction that I was heading earlier. I know I was on the opposite side of that. I was headed that way to the left. And find a road parallel. Right? What am I doing? I'm finding a road that I think heads away from the coast. And look at my HP already went to yellow. With a little help of a coding, pop. I'm going to be heading even faster. Inland, okay? Once again, I am using the road, but I am not on the road, okay? It doesn't help that I look like like the a mustard mayonnaise sandwich ranch classic. I don't know what I look like. I'm colorful. It doesn't help that, but I can't I can't do anything about that right now. All I can do is stay Localized to this road, but not on it, right? And head inland. What a funny interaction, though. Um, I want to point out a couple things about that interaction that happened earlier. When someone threatened one of the homies, because we had numbers, that person was very, like, on guard, right? It When it comes to DayZ, usually... Obviously, not always, because these are people we're talking about, and people are irrational, crazy creatures. When it comes to Daisy, the people that you interact with are normally going to give you the same energy that you give them. Normally, okay? Oh, it looks like my road is turning, but it's turning to a way that I don't think is any longer uh, forcing me inland. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going the way that I was headed. Oh, it looks like there's another road down there. Boom. I'm going to focus on that one now. Um, but normally, the energy that you bring to someone, they're going to bring that back to you. Right? So me coming up to those guys and being like, hey, how you doing? I just walked up to them, started talking with them, joking with them, laughing. Maybe what they said wasn't even funny, but I went, ha, 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 ha. Anyway, you know what I mean? Just little things like that will make people endeared to you in a way that will connect you to them, okay? So I'm just following this dirt, this dirt path here that I found, okay? Keep in mind, we always want our stuff on the hot bar here. Is this bandage disinfected? No. So I don't want to use that bandage until I use an alcohol tincture on it. I'm going to use an alcohol tincture on it now so I don't mess it up later, right? And this is going to disinfect that bandage and make it usable for me, okay? Boom. Oh, looks like I found buildings. Sounds about right. I think that's the main road I was on before I got hurt. But I'm not really in need of food anymore, right? I would say so. My jacket is full. I'm white water, white white food, going up with three bars on both of them, and I still got an army of venison in my back, right? You can loot all these houses, okay? And you wouldn't you wouldn't be a fool to do it, because as we said earlier, we're pretty we're pretty far from the coast now. So the the houses are gonna have better and better loot, right? But you should always be navigating yourself and generally pushing yourself towards loot that you don't have, not loot that you do have. And what I mean by that is like 
once I got a melee weapon and I got a knife and and I got bandages and I got alcohol tincture and I got chlorine tablets and I got codeine and I got tetra if I got all of these medical items should I be like frequenting medical facilities no right if I got all this food should I be frequenting places that their main output is food not really right what I should do is try and fill in the blanks of my equip. And what is the blank of my equip right now? What do you guys think? It's what we talked about earlier. It's armor, right? I don't have anything to protect me versus things that are against me. Okay. So what I should be looking for is military areas for armor. I could also find it in civilian like stores and things like that. Maybe even in a civilian house, sometimes you can find the blue press vest, but a little bit rarer. Okay. But mostly what I'm looking for, for almost guaranteed, not guaranteed, nothing's guaranteed in DayZ, right? We saw that on this journey. But for a, a really good setup, what I should be looking for is a police station, okay? Dude, this is perfect. This is like when everything goes wrong in DayZ. It's the opposite side of the coin. <laughs> okay, it looks like all the houses are on the opposite side. Here, so I'm going to go across. Uh, this is something, too. You don't want wet clothes. They lower your stamina, and they overall just mess with your weight. So if something is wet, you can put it into your hands, and you can hold left click in the bottom right, bottom left, sorry, and wring it out. Ultimately, sitting by a fire is the best way to get these things dried out all the way. But you could dry them to the point of only damp, okay? Like these are soaked, for example, so I could actually wring these out three times, right, if I wanted to. And put them all the way to the damp status, okay? But I see civilian houses here. I don't see a police station. So I'm just going to keep going parallel with this. Maybe I'll go loot some of these when they're convenient for me, right? But my main... Ooh, another shotgun? What kind? Ooh, a double barrel shotgun. So we're going to take this. So I'm unchambering this by tapping R. I'm taking the double barrel. We're going to go ahead and hold R to reload the bullets. I think that round on the right is a rubber slug. Am I tripping? No. Okay. I wonder why it's loading. That was weird. I'd be lying to you guys if that zombie didn't scare the hell out of me just now. <laughs> Alright, so I want to make sure not to get hit because remember, I'm in the healing process. So I really got to make sure to stagger this guy. Okay. I see a lot of civilian houses, but I'm seeing a lot of zombies too. So I kind of, at this point in my journey, I'm kind of thinking I want to be very careful here, okay? Play it more passive than aggressive. But I do need better camouflage. I am mustard yellow. So let's do a little loot. Maybe I find a Mosin or some pistol I can use. Fat. So this can be human fat. If you find fat in the world, guys, like that, consider it not edible unless you're on the edge of life, right? Ooh, look at this powdered milk. Someone dropped that. Hmm. Looks like I am right behind somebody. Okay. Like very close behind somebody. So what you do in this case... Is I consider all of these houses at this point because I found those pieces of loot. That that's meat too. That meat could uh can ruin, right? Ooh, look what I found. A CR guys. So I'm gonna take that and put that on two. Did I find 762 earlier? I don't think I did. Okay, but I don't have a round in the chamber, remember? If I find a gun in the world and it hasn't been touched, it's spawned. Doesn't have a round in the chamber. And that's only until February. They're going to change that in February. Um, But yeah, I'm just going to consider all these houses touched. And I'm going to distance myself. Why? Because I want to look for a fire in the air. Okay? I want to see if this person... There is meat there. Maybe they cook there. Right? Because there was powdered milk dropped outside. 
So they could have already cooked in that house and moved on. Or they could have got the resource there and cooked somewhere else. So I know for a fact. Remember earlier? I was like, it feels like I'm on someone's footstep, right? I think I was right. Okay, but all of those houses, once again, those were all civilian houses that I just passed. And remember, I'm keeping my eye on the road. I'm running parallel to it, and we're headed inland, 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 inland. Deeper, deeper, deeper. Wow, that's... Wow, that is beautiful. Okay. Deeper, deeper, inland, inland. Generally speaking, I shouldn't be in the middle of a field, right? This is a very silly place for me to be. Dumb place. I should be on a tree line always, right? I see a scope store down there that I want to loot, though, right there. Oh, and a PD, guys. Police station. So what am I looking for at the police station here? I am looking for a couple things, okay? Oops. I am looking for... Oh, and a well right in front of it, too. I am looking for a police zombie with a vest. And that is all. <laughs> We're looking for armor and nothing else. I can find shotgun rounds for sure. I can find... Lots of stuff. But keep in mind, we're behind somebody. So we have to stay mindful of that, okay? Looks like I found a sewing kit. That guy doesn't have one. That guy doesn't have one. <laughs> that is unfortunate. That guy doesn't have one. It's an 0 for 3 right there. Once again, evidence that someone is in front of me. Hello? Hello? Once again, someone is in front of me, guys. Whenever you're up here, the top is like, give or take. I, it, some servers, it spawns a bunch of stuff. Sometimes it spawns nothing, you know? I'm going to take these green pants. For the benefit of camouflage, which I haven't quite completed yet. But let's go. We're on We're on someone's tail. If I want to catch them, I got I to gotta make some money moves here. So, I noticed there's a bunch of zombies on me. I'm keeping an eye on my stamina, making sure I have enough to make it to the door of one of the buildings I'm near. Okay. And here, I'll show you guys this little trick too, okay? The zombies are going to aggro to where you are in the building, okay? So, if I go right here, for example, all the zombies are going to come over here. This is very important when you're leaving buildings, okay? Like, I have zombie aggro on me. It's a bunch of them, right? I can go to this corner here. Now all the zombies are in this corner. And when I leave, now I have this buffer behind me from those zombies, right? They have to go around the building a little bit and then try and track me. Okay. Oh, but it looks like they tracked me pretty well there. So I'm going to go ahead and lock them in here. Honestly, I kind of want to kill this police zombie, but I don't think it's worth it for the two of them. So I'm just going to lock them in. We're going to move on. But there is definitely someone ahead of us on this path, guys. So let's try and stay hot on the foot. Oh god, I thought I, I, thought I had a melee weapon hotbar. I 
top for Hi boy. Ultimately better camouflage than mine, I think, so let's take it. And it's a little swaggier, I would say. Come on, guys. When you have food, eat your food. Uh, you just don't want to eat when you're full apple, and it looks like I'm full apple right now. But I have greed in my heart, and I have so much of it, I'm going to continue to eat. A glutton, if you will. Katapo or Norna. So... At this point, I'm inland, okay? I've made it. I'm two towns deep. It's really your choice. I could go that way to Katapo, right? That's what it said. Tell me, Katapo, down this road two miles, or to Norna, up this road, or whatever that says, okay? You can stay on your path. This is the main road that we've been on the whole time, right? Or I could diverge from it. It's up to me, really, ultimately. I'm going to diverge from it, though. Let's see what we find over here. I know it's going to be up that road there, so I'm going to keep that road in my sight. I'm going to run parallel with it. We're going to head over to Katapo. Now, once again, if you guys are watching this video this far, and you haven't watched the first one, okay... I'm just going to highly recommend that you take a second and watch that first video. Um, it is it is way more a basic look at the game. And this is kind of like in addition to that one, if that makes sense. I didn't want to give too much of the same information, although there are certain things that I have to touch on because they're core principles. So if you haven't seen the first one, I'd highly recommend checking it out. Just because you could see a lot more. So I just heard a rumble. I'll turn it up in the post effects. A little rumble there. That was a gas zone landing, okay? And I, if I was closer to that, I'd be kind of concerned, right? But I'm way out here in the bush. I'm not too worried about that. If I were to go to that gas zone, I would need to have a full NBC suit and a gas mask. If not, I would get mustard gas poisoning and I would die, okay? So once again, I'm relative to the road, but I'm not on the road, right? I know I only have one bullet in this CR. And I have an extra shotgun round, okay? So I'm pretty low on ammo right now. If I were to come across people, selecting when to shoot is incredibly valuable right now, right? Because if I miss, not only do I not have armor, so I can't really take a shot back, but also on top of that, I, I then am, am close to having no ammo left, right? So choosing when to shoot and when not to when it comes to running into someone is very important, right? Oh, it looks like I'm coming up on a military tent here. So when, whenever you're coming up on a military territory, one... You have to take into consideration, people are going to be looking for weapons there. What do you do with weapons, right? So it's less likely someone is going to be super friendly in a military zone, especially one inland. Also alongside that, these zombies that we find over here are going to be much stronger than the previous ones. Okay, much stronger. Okay, But alongside that, the zombies, just like the police said, they can spawn uh, pr armor. So we could get armor off these zombies here. Uh, particularly a plate carrier, which is the third tier of armor. bunch of dead zombies there so that tells me someone just jumped up on that fought a bunch of zombies okay so I have to be aware that someone was recently here so 
So there's not many buildings here. It's fair to say that person probably looted everything. Okay. I can check. But ultimately, I think it's going to be in vain. I kind of wanted the camouflage there. But I know that there is a PD nearby. Yeah, this person was a fresh spawn. They had a head wrap. They had a bunch of basics. So I'm going to go down this road and head to the town that I know is nearby over here. And see if they are down there. They should actually probably be going that way though. So this is a broken down Humvee. But this is a usable Humvee right here. All it needs is a glow plug. And this thing can drive. So we're going to keep that in mind. And this is where a moment like uh, having a map like I Survive could really come in handy for you. If you're a new player and you know that you're in Katapo, you could mark a Humvee on there and it will it'll save it for you. And kind of allow you to interactive, interactively place things on the map, okay? But keep in mind when you're... When you, like at this point, I'm kind of expecting someone to be kind of geared over here, right? It becomes even more a game of being aware of my surroundings. Notice how I'm constantly checking left, constantly checking right, constantly checking the horizon, constantly checking in between the houses. You're not necessarily, don't like strain yourself to look for people all the time. You're looking for changes in texture, like that blue guy I just made right there, right? He moved a little bit and it formed like a change in my mind, like something was moving over there. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for movement. I think I find a lot of people that other people don't see. And they're like, how did you see that? And I'm like, well, it's the only thing moving. And that's all my eyes are looking for, right? Oh, another police station, okay? So once again, we're looking for armor. This police station, same thing's got to go as the military back there, right? It's got to be looked at as a very, um, like a dangerous spot. People, what's in the police station? No. I mean? It's gonna be armor and weapons. So someone just aggroed these zombies in here. Is that a glow stick? <sighs> Once again, piece of paper, that means someone's been here. Alright, so we're going to keep heading this way. So I believe it is inland. And this would be a good time to check our compass. Because remember, when we were heading off the coast, we were heading west. So i got to make sure I'm going north and west. So that's north and I need to go west. Boom, there you go. It's like an uglier version of my sick yellow jacket I had earlier. Oh. Okay, perfect. Look at this. That's the mustard gas. So if I was in that town right now, I would be dying to that mustard gas, right? Because I, But because I'm already out of there, I don't have to worry about it so much. 
If I was in the middle, I would want to run out the second I heard the Right? If you do get stuck in that mustard gas there, uh, it gives you something called... Uh, uh, sorry, the only way you can remedy that is by having a pox antidote. And that's like a syringe. Just has a different uh, texture... Or sorry, a different design on the model. But we are headed inland. We are headed further down the map. I'm going to go up to this tree line here. I see a road here. So like I said, I know that that road is headed the direction that I'm looking for. I need to keep heading up, okay? And now for that vehicle back there, I need a glow plug for that to work, okay? And it's fair to assume that someone else has come across that because everything was open on it, right? It's so like a way of thinking about vehicles is if I really wanted to find a glow plug for that, I need to go to industrial areas and I need to be looking for through all of the sheds, right? It's very important. Looks like I have two signs here. This will help me decide where I'm going to go next. Waxoba and Katoba. We already saw that that was Katapo. Sorry. What do we have here? We have Rhinobo and Waxoba. Let's try Waxoba. Okay, so we're going to head to the right down here. And now we are sufficiently into the map, okay? I always consider two towns to be like that marker of, well, now I am inland, right? But at this point, I'm three, four towns in, right? I'm pretty deep. I can almost guarantee the loot I find up here is going to be superior to my first loot experience over there, right? I'm willing to bet. Okay, so I know Waxoba is somewhere down this way. Let's go figure it out. Oh, looks like we found a little, this is something I haven't shown you guys yet. Oh, look at that. That's where we are. So these things spawn all across the map and they'll always have a red dot telling you where I am, okay? So let's look at where we started from. We started from Solnichny. Um, let me. We started in Solnichny right there, okay? We headed to inland on that road. Right there is where we were starving to death. We came down here. We killed, uh, killed, uh, Oh, I think it's more right here. Yeah, we killed something. Killed the venison. Oh, my God. We cooked right there, and then we came back up. Came back up. Then we got right there past that town, Dolina. Right where that road goes down. Right there. And we went to Staroy or Katapo right here. Okay. Now we are running up that road. We are at this cross right here. And we could go left to Rhinobo, which is right there. But we went up to Waxobka. Boom, son. So these maps will kind of help you get the picture as to where where you are and where you're going. Also, there's these hiking paths that will be marked like this. So you can also use these hiking paths to sort of navigate you. But I would say the hiking paths are less valuable to you ultimately. Because if you take the hiking paths, they can sometimes do a full loop on themselves and end you back in the place that you don't want to be, okay? So once again, on the road, or sorry, with the road, but not on the road, right? Check it out. I'm still full white apple, guys, from that one venison that we hunted, okay? And all that takes is you finding that, finding that weapon and getting it ready. Looks like we're in wax go back. Okay, and keep in mind, we're still on the tail of someone, so we need to keep eyes out for, like, things that would make us think someone's been in front of us, okay? Which is like paper, because when you open an ammo box, it automatically drops a piece of paper on the ground, right? Let's start. Let's check it out. I will say, I think one of the most common things that happens to new players and gets them discouraged is they follow, like, all the things that I've said, and then something like this happens where they're tracing somebody, you know? And everywhere they go, there's no loot, there's no food. Well, ultimately, it's like right there when I had that choice between Waxcopka and Rhinobo, right? And I had those two options in front of me. Right there is an opportunity for me to break off that, right? 
if I went to the one that my that the person I'm following went to as well, then that's unfortunate. But it gets less and less likely the more and more options you add to it, right? The more and more turns there are, the more and more um, moments of change in the in the pathway. Oh god. So it's raining right now, so these zombies can't really see me too well. I'm almost invisible to them. Notice how they didn't aggro? That's a good item right there. Boom. I want that. That's camouflage right there and swag, baby. Okay. Ooh, it looks like I found a BK. Um, but this is a less quality version of the CR. So I'm going to keep my CR there. I may, I may just still be on this person's tail. But thankfully for us, we've kind of put ourselves into a position where we don't need too much, right? Oh, that's a huge find. So multivitamins are super big, especially when it's raining and you're covered in water, right? Pop one of these, my immunity goes to the max it possibly can stat wise. And I become pretty much immune to sickness for that time. So let's say I was right before I found those multivitamins. Let's say I was on the edge. I was about to get sick, right? Five more minutes of running and I was uh, five more seconds. Let's say if I pop those multivitamins before that happens, right? If I pop those multivitamins, the moment five seconds before I'm about to get sick, I will no longer get sick and that sickness will be expunged, right? So, once again, heading on the road, but not on the road. Looks like the road shifts. Goes to right there. There's something over there. Let's go check it out. Now, I'm more inland than I was previously, okay? And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to log off up here. And if you guys really like the journey and if the... If the video um, does well and you guys are like enjoying the character, I'll join back on the server and I will continue playing this life. But I wanted to give you guys a different look as to what it may look like to be on a journey and how to sort of combat the many different things that can happen during that journey, right? I'll tell you what, we're going to find a nice house over here. That's a cool little place. Little wax goba outskirts. Looks like I found another mag for my gun there. Okay. And we're going to call this for chapter two of uh, how to have a perfect start in Daisy or maybe the worst start ever in Daisy. <laughs> um, ultimately, guys, I wanted to show you a lot of different things, right? Mainly that while we are playing, it's not always going to be perfect, even for someone with a great deal of experience. And sometimes, like I had a plan to take those two dudes on a journey. Sometimes you don't have that plan, right? It doesn't work out how you want and the journey changes. Ultimately... What you got to do is you got to stay true to it. You got to keep trying. You got to make the best out of what it is. This is a little sheep down there. I'm going to let that sheep go. Care about you guys. If you liked it, let me know. If you want to see more, let me know twice. Care about you. Thank you so much for all the views. It's amazing to me that our channel has grown so much in the short period of time. But this is the second installment in How to Have a Perfect Start. Care about you. Bye-bye.